Okay, now I'm back again with some more audio settings in OBS Studio. All right. Um, I um, just before I started, I did some adjusting on. Uh, I set the uh, sound preferences to the so I could see the input of that. Actually, I don't think that made any difference whatsoever. Uh, just really remembered. <clears throat> this doesn't actually change anything. OBS still gets both of these mics either way, wherever that's set. But that does show. I can, that's the only way you know. Okay, that's the, oh yeah, the, well I had to do that so I could adjust it. So I use this to adjust the input. That's the only adjustment I have for the input. Well, no, that's not true. I have one right here um, on OBS Studio, which I could use, but I, I generally like to, I like to keep them all on max and use the inputs like from, well, I've been using my mixer, and then, of course, on the phones, they're just... You could not change anything in the phones, they were automatic. So, uh, <clears throat> what I would do is uh, set them all on max and then adjust the mixer to uh, match the phones as close as I could. So, I did just realize the phone seemed louder. So, so I, I sat, sat there, there and looked at it and just did a check, check with them both running and watched the meters, meters, you know, this this meter, these two here down here. So, um, <clears throat> hopefully, they're about the same. Now, let's go ahead and switch. Okay, now we're on the uh, mic on the lapel mic, um, and I also by backing off on the input, that will get rid of some of that background noise. This is very sensitive. This gain here, uh, this software gain, <coughs> uh, you can. It doesn't take much to bring in a bunch of background noise or to kind of cut it back. It also doesn't take much to kill the signal to where it's just not loud enough. So. I can turn on, there is something you can do. You can uh, go into advanced properties and uh, I wish it would default to being able to see the whole thing. Okay, right here, you can do this and I don't, I didn't, I usually don't because it's, it's so uh, easy to get a nasty feedback, but you can turn on monitors on these, on your mics. I could turn that one on uh, monitor only mute output well you wouldn't want to do that but you can do monitor and output but your mic will pick that up it'll give you an echo so um, let's see let me turn this my output way down because I don't know where the point is where it will okay now I should be able to hear it if I turn it up okay yeah and it's it's a big echo like you're in a huge stadium and it does pick up on your recording, so I wouldn't record that way. Now let's, let's see what we've got, got there. there. Okay. okay. Check, check one, two. Check, check one, two. Mute Check one, two. two. Check check one, one, two. two. Okay. okay. So it's not, not much use, to be honest. No, not, not with, with your speakers. speakers. Now, it might be okay with your headphones. If you had your headphones plugged into your computer. And you can turn that on and off while you're live, too, while you're recording. I hadn't, I, <coughs> I hadn't uh, used this very often, but uh, you can use that. And you even have panning if you wanted to use that. I don't like listening to myself. I don't like wearing headphones because it just drives me nuts. Uh, too much sound in my ears because, because <laughs> well, because I blew my ears out, ears out mixing sound uh, for rock for <laughs> for. Uh, Christian rock bands, punk bands, metal bands, hardcore bands for about 12 years. So listen to your mom. Don't listen to that music so loud. <clears throat> It'll ruin your ears. And they say that headphones can do it too. I'm sure they can if you keep doing it for 20 years, you know. Or two. Actually, it probably only took me about five years of it to... On, well, honestly, I had jobs in... Uh, in a factory and construction type work, it was always no. I was always in a loud environment, not just when I was mixing sound. So, ever since I started working in 1973, I've been working in noise. So, um, <clears throat> or I was uh, until about 2000. By that time, I was, the damage was done. Now I can't hardly stand to listen to my favorite music. It drives me. It, it uh, just it hurts. You know, but uh, I turn it, have to turn it down so low that I can't hear the music well or the words, and it's not near as enjoyable. So I'll listen and like 
10 to 30 minutes is about the most I can take. And that's, you know, turn, it's not loud. It's just, just enough where I can hear it. So anyway, <clears throat> and no, it's not because I'm deaf and I've got it really loud. It's not bothering anybody else in the house, so I know it's not that loud. <laughs> uh, it's not like the guitar player here. <laughs> Those guys, I've never seen anything like guitar players. But by the time they play guitar for 10 years, they can't hear a thing. And they got that guitar up so loud that you can't get the you can't get the vocals up to match it unless you got like a super sound system. <laughs> so anyway, um, what am I doing? Okay, so um, well, Mike Ox two. Let me see. Oh yeah, I was gonna switch. Well, yeah, I I want to put me a shortcut in here, but I'll do that later. What I want to do is I'm gonna unplug the. Um, I'll, I'll I can show it. You can unplug USB devices, you know, in real time here without hurting anything. I did figure out something. First thing I did, uh, I knew I was trying to route the cable in the best way. I wanted to, I, well, I put a twisty on it and tied it to my rack to give it some strain relief so that if I accidentally yanked on it, it didn't break it. These little spindly cables in my USB adapter, you know, sticking out of my machine. Uh, <clears throat> and um, so I thought, okay, I don't want to unplug the USB adapter to reroute the cable because uh, that'll probably it might jack things up but you know to do to, to be with the machine recognizing it the system well I unplugged the the cable the audio cable from there's a couple of adapters so I unplugged them from each other and then when I plugged it back in it didn't see the adapter was gone it made the adapter go away this one up here and, uh, and then it didn't come back and then I thought oh crap what am I gonna sometimes you have to reboot the computer to get it to see it again and I didn't want to plug it in the other USB port because that port is for my endoscope. And um, I was actually kind of worried that it would, well, what happens if I plug something into that same, I didn't ever, I didn't think that, you know, Linux or Windows did this, but Linux remembers which port you've used. And if you put that US, same USB camera in a different port, or at least it does with you, with OBS Studio, it does. Maybe something about it's got to be something about OBS Studio because I've never seen that happen before. But um, when you plug it into a different port, it doesn't see it, and it, and you can plug any camera you want, any USB camera. I've got three of them. You can plug any one you want into that same port, and it'll show up in the same place. You know, you see down here on the left where it says in the USB Endoscope. Well, it'll be whatever camera you plug in there. So if I was I was afraid if I plug the audio device into that same port, it would. Uh, try to show up on that spot there uh, and I didn't want it there you know uh, it might it might actually work uh, but uh, uh, because I think you can do audio and video through the, you know if, if it's a USB camera the ones I'm using uh, one of them does have a mic well no one of them has a mic but it has a separate audio cable you know it's not built in so yeah none of my USB cameras have uh, audio through USB so anyway <clears throat> I want to unplug the uh, USB audio adapter, and I'm going to plug the mic into the mic input and see if I will have both signals or if it will like mute my line input, which is what I think will happen. So it may mute my uh, SM58, is what it might do. So we'll find out. <clears throat> okay, got it unplugged. You can see that it went away. Okay, now let's see if our inputs have changed. Our device, you know, our hardware won't change. It's going to go through this hardware. That's why I think I may lose my... I still have the SM58. I can see that. Okay. No? Okay. Oh, the connector is front microphone, but OBS still sees it. So that's a good thing. But see, it defaulted to uh, front microphone. Uh, so that well, what that really means is Okay, then there's...
check one, two. You know, I, I'm going to be talking on the uh, lapels. I bet I am. Check one, two. Looks like it has compression, though. Okay, line in. Check one, two. Maybe not. Check one, two. Okay, yeah, it's not that it has compression, it's just turned down really low. Check one, two, check one, two. So now this gets to what I was expecting to get before when I had the separate USB sound card. Um, check one, two. Yeah, okay, so it's working. I'm just watching the signal here to see whether or not I think it's working. <coughs> um, so I don't want to put it on the rear microphone. There's nothing plugged in there, and I just got noise in the mic. Check one, two, check one, two. Yeah. All right, now front microphone. Now I would need to bring it up to about where I had it before. There we go. Check one, two. Oops, way too hot. Still way too hot. Check one, two, check one, two. See, there's no compression or noise gate or anything, so if I get even a little bit loud, it's going to be way too loud. Check one, two. Check one, two. See, you can dance on up there higher with the compressor without. You really got to get loud to. Uh... Okay, yeah. Now, a while ago, this is this is the reason I expected that out of the uh, <coughs> out of the. Uh, I think I'm ended up back where I started. Really, check check one, two. This thing's really hard to put where you want it to. Check one, two. It doesn't go with you. You can kind of see that you're dragging the mouse over, but it's 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 stretch. It's like you're stretching a rubber band. You know, it gets a, off of the button and it don't want to move. Then all of a sudden it'll jump. Check one, two. Okay, that's probably fairly close to the S and fifty eight. Check, check one, two. Check one, two. Don't you love hearing? Check one, two. Over and over. Check one, two. Well, maybe not. Check one, two. Now that's probably more like it and I could listen but really the only w use it would be for me is uh oh that changes both of them check one two I just realized it changed this one is is where I put see I know this was it all looks wrong it's like it's changed things because um, this is usually on there's usually more space down here, and it's usually like right in there, and it's not like almost touching. That's got me wondering what's going on. Okay, but what I want to do is uh, check one, two, check one, two. Okay, I could be fooling myself. This may not be doing, since I'm not monitoring it. I guess I could do that for a second and find out before I go any further here. It is useful. This can be useful, that's for sure. Um, okay, let's see. We're going to monitor just this one. Monitor and output. Check one, two. Oh, now it's going to the desktop audio, too. I didn't notice it did that. Check one, two. Check, check. Now. Check one, two. Check, check, check. I can't hear the, uh, I can see the signal. Oh. Check, check, check. Yeah, so it's not getting recorded. Check one, two. 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 Check, check, check. Check, check. <clears throat> check one, two. Check, check. I think my compressor is really kicking in because this is, well, no, that wouldn't have anything to do with make the compressor kick in more. I've been kind of debating about that anyway, is whether or not it was kicking in too much. Okay, uh, monitor off. I'm going to close that. You can't have a bunch of different 
things open in the uh yeah you can't just go by your meters you really do have to listen if you're setting audio i always think oh i can do it <clears throat> but uh, on this software stuff but you can't it's just like any any kind of audio you gotta listen to it to set it up okay so um what i am wondering is well this is what i had planned from the beginning and then i got sidetracked device not connected or not available Okay, that's device two, which is the USB, and I'm just gonna. So that's what you get when you unplug your USB sound card. Okay, built-in analog stereo and default. Now I already found out that changing the. Uh, well, now. That was when I was had the USB in there. So let's put it on default. And then we will see if what I expected we'll go ahead and get on uh, okay it's on so let's turn off the second one so we won't have two of them and I guess I better uh, start up this uh, monitor <coughs> of the audio ah don't do that that mess up your that messes up your scene <laughs> that'll make you see only part of my picture there that coming it got a hold of the wrong one. Okay. Now, um, we're going to monitor Mike Ox 3. Check one, two. Check, check. Check one, two. Okay, that's line in. I've got it down low because I don't want it to really cause trouble. Check one, two. No. Don't get anything, do we? Check one, two. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, okay. It doesn't work. I didn't think it did because I've tried it before. And, uh, I may have to get my headsets out to fix everything now. Uh, <clears throat> now I've messed up my, I'm pretty sure I've messed up my SM58. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Maybe this corner of that goes right here. But I, that, I'm pretty sure that's too high. I guess I'll listen to the video and see. And then uh, what I can do is plug. Let's see. Yeah, I can plug my headset into the computer and then turn on that monitoring. And I won't get the. I may still get an echo. I'm not sure. And it makes it hard to set it when it's echoing. But uh, I'm going to unplug the uh, mic now. <clears throat> oh, and I think I'll plug in. Well, actually, n yes, no. I'm wanting to go to the <clears throat> phone one, really. I think I'll leave it like this for now. I'm going to plug the USB back in. Looks like we got uh, a new device because we got more stuff in the window. Yep, we got it. So if you just if you want to do any plugging and unplugging, unplug the USB device. Most, well, at least with these sound card USB sound cards I have, something USB devices like hard drives, you don't want to just unplug them and, and plug them and unplug them. You need to mount and unmount them first. <coughs> I mean, unmount them first. <coughs> so um, the sound seems to be the same whether I'm on. SM58 or um, Mike Ox 3 that is um, it uh, <clears throat> it is uh, it's all set on default but the default is the uh, the built in so I'm going to disable that one again I don't want that that's just more more extra stuff I don't need in there and then, uh, so now we've got built in and the audio adapter of the fly. Now it should be available. And we could have them both, and we don't want that. And then we'll have the. Uh, 
Let's do them both for a second. Now it looks like the SM58 is louder than the uh, than the. Uh, that's what I thought. Check one, two. Oh well, I adjusted things all over the place, didn't I? So let's uh, let's go back to the advanced properties. Let's see, I have to use the. Uh, actually, I don't guess I really need the advanced properties to do this, but we'll have it up anyway. Okay, line in. Check one, two. I think it needs to be back to there at least um, and then this one check one two that's still about where I had it okay see that one good thing about all this is if you don't well I guess when you plug in a, a mic it, it they're using the same adjusting mechanism I guess whoops built-in analog stereo yeah oh now it's back to normal I think it, yeah, in certain circumstances, it sets itself. Now, look, see, the whole interface is different now. Is that because I was on one of these? No. It changed, just like I said. Look, this is more space here, and that is right to there like it's always been. Okay, and I don't have to mess with it. It puts itself back there. Uh, I've seen it get, I've seen, you know, like sometimes my sound will be, a little too loud and a little bit distorted and it's because this has gotten moved up that is exactly where I need it in conjunction with my particular input setup the SM58 the Behringer mixer and the Behringer VM now I just have to uh, let's see now they're kinda close yeah closer to the same so <clears throat> not shouldn't be too bad on the volume it, it's really hard besides the uh, I mean, the meter helps. This meter is pretty good, by the way, in OBS Studio. But the meter helps. It's pretty close to actual decibel level that are marked on it, you know. Um, Digital-wise, anyway. There's a it, digital measurement, and what happens at certain decibel levels is completely different than analog. Like with analog, you could peg past zero up to like 10 dB. At, at just like if you went... You would you would set it up to probably go to zero dB between ten and plus ten, you know, or negative or whichever we have plus ten, and uh, depending on your you know your equipment, but like if it's a uh, a uh, cassette recorder or a reel to reel recorder or the analog flavor, uh, then that has real you know v v v meters on them, and it really doesn't even matter. Well, it kind of matters, but the the old analog meters with the needle. They they're more for yeah. You know, when it gets past zero dB, it's more forgiving than uh, so they're probably than the say some of the newer ones in the 80s and 90s that had uh, you know electronic meters. <clears throat> uh, usually, but still with them, you could still go a little over zero dB. Maybe just say maybe not to plus ten, maybe plus five. That would be your, what I'm saying is your peaks. Like you can see my peaks right now, they're pretty low. I mean the yellow zone. You're not, okay, that yellow zone should be safe. And up to negative 5 dB should be completely safe. Even up to right at 0 dB should be safe. But when you're recording into a computer, what I got right here is about as high as you want to ride. Because if you get up there all the way to 0 dB, it's pure distortion. And I don't care if it's OBS or a DOW software or if you're just using... Uh, this right here, of course, you don't know where you are. You're just guessing with this, really. You, you can just see that there's a... You see, this is the fool. You see, it looks like you have no signal, like it's terrible, like it's going to be so low it won't be heard. That is not the case with this particular uh, sound preferences interface for... Uh, uh, well, like I said, it really behaves the same from what I remember in Debane and in Fedora ever since I started using it in Fedora 5, since I started using Linux in Fedora 5. <clears throat> maybe there's some variation I'm sure over the years but so. so anyway this is what I may use I'm not really happy with the sound of the lapel it's a, I think it may be, I'll go back and listen to this but it may be a little better than it was when I started out I think I just needed to back off the gain to cut out some of that background noise but I really like how the phones have their own built in compressor and noise gate they cut out background noise and they uh, you, you, you 
it's not as good as the compressor in, in my V amp over here at all. Oh, I've got both of them going. Sorry. It's not as good as my compressor in my V amp, which is by no means a fantastic compressor. It's it's adequate. Uh, the ones that we always use, most of, there's two that we used a lot. DBX, I really liked, and that's what I learned to really do well with. And uh, then they, we used the leases a lot because they were cheaper. And uh, but they they were kind of more like this VM. They just weren't very good. They were kind of noisy. Have to really mess with this thing to get it to not make a little little noise when it when it uh, uh, you know compresses the signal. And um, that's what I was hearing a little bit of that a while ago in one of these tests. And that all depends on <clears throat> it depends on your your gain structure. So where you've got your level where you've got your gain your actual gain on the board and then the, and the vamp has its own gain uh, it has master volume it has master volume it has master i think that's effects volume this one here they're actual real knobs you know you don't have to press buttons or anything then you've got uh, another gain on here or the same time this is the same thing as the gain on your mixer it's a digital setup instead of an analog you know i think the uh, yeah, the gain in a mixer, in this mixer, you can't see where I'm pointing, but the gain in the mixer is uh, analog. I'm, I'm almost certain it's analog. Uh, um, probably, and I'll go out on a limb here and say it might be a potentiometer of some type. Um, I'm not sure how they make, what they use. I'm learning a little here, a little there, and I forget things too, but it seems to me that from what I'm learning watching all these electronics videos that... Uh, Pretty much, if you're raising the volume up and down, it's some type of potentiometer uh, for the gain or for the um, uh, the volume, the level, and the difference would be what kind of uh, ex electronics they're they're daisy chain through, like maybe, well, I don't know. I, was, I could say resistors and so on, but I wouldn't know. I've watched them. I, Dave, uh, I like to watch Dave Jones's videos. He was tearing down a huge console mixer. And I learned a lot through that. I've ran mixers about half that size. This one was, I think it might have been 48 channel, but I remember it had two master buses on it. So it had uh, enough to, at least 16 channels on the left and then a 16 channel. Well, no, it was more than that. Yeah, it was like, it could have been a 64 channel. Anyway, it had two sets of master buses, which is master output. So, um, Anyway, he took it all apart and explained what a whole lot of it was. It was an analog mixture too, which was cool to me because that's what I always used. And uh, <clears throat> and and anyway, I learned the difference between what is the difference between analog and digital electronics. You always hear that stuff, but it's such a you know uh, out pie in the sky concept. Or I can't say the word, abstract concept until you see. For me, till I see people say this thing does this, this thing does that, and and a little bit of how it does that, then I begin to catch on. So, uh, then I can't remember enough of it to re-explain it, so you'll have to go watch Dave's video if you want to learn that stuff, or, uh, oh, I can't think of the other people's names. There's about four of them I've been watching. Uh, one of them, the two first ones I found, out, I learned, I've discovered that really enjoyed watching was Jerry Ellsworth, a uh, lady, who is a self-taught engineer that's just, she's amazing. And she was always uh, going into, like, really complicated stuff. Well, sometimes she would just have a simple, fairly simple thing she was building, but and she'd be building something and then explain how it worked and show how it worked. Um, and then uh, sometimes she would, like one time she had a very old 1970s memory. I can't remember what it was called. And she was learning about it herself, but then explaining what she learned. Anyway, and then Dave Jones is an electronics engineer in Australia. And that's all he does now is just make videos. And um, But he used to, you know, work for companies designing electronics. So, <clears throat> But he's a fantastic teacher. And, um, and then there's some other people that I just, just discovered through their channels and stuff. And for her channel, actually, two of them. I can't think of the other guy. He's in England. Oh, I can't think of his name. He's pretty good too. He tears 
the only thing is he's always tearing apart stuff you buy in England, you know, 220 volt stuff and brands I've never heard of. But it's still really interesting because when you see and take it apart, it's just like a lot like what we got here. But he takes things apart and shows you just, you know, how everything is so poorly built and, and electronics and light bulbs and everything else can be dangerous these days, really dangerous. Well, he shows just how dangerous they are and why and where they could have made them right. And that's really interesting. Uh, Clive, Big Clive, I think it might be his name on his YouTube. Something like that. So anyway, um, I lost my track. <coughs> thought of track, track of thought. So um, that's where I'm going to leave it right now. And I, when I first started hearing this lapel mic, I thought, I don't want to use that at all. But um, it's not quite as bad. I'll switch back to it so I can hear it myself. When I'm not quite as bad as I after. I think maybe it won't be as bad after adjusting the levels. And uh, <clears throat> then I could still have both cameras. I don't know if I'll stick with it, but I could try it for a while. Um, yeah. And then, um, but it, when I do set up a camera to uh, the uh, audio, uh, for right now anyway, it'll be camera one, and I won't use it, I'll just use it for audio most of the time, because I was going to try that, but I don't think I'll do that this evening, this is, as usual, it's taken way, way longer than I hoped it would, um, I have, in the, you know, in the back of my mind, I need to finish my server, need to finish my server, but the other thing is, in the front of my mind <laughs> is I need to get OBS working well again. It used to work so perfect, and now I can't stream. It crashes every time I click stream. And uh, and then uh, my battery dying on my phone 3 so that I can't have a, you know, an audio stream and two video streams <coughs> at the, all at the same time has got me limping along, feeling like I'm limping along. So, um... um I, I um, but since I this is a new mic and I hadn't tried it out in any other way but going through a camera, I just kept thinking I should try it on the computer, so I did. And <clears throat> now, what I need, to, what I want to do is try one more time to get OBS working. And the only thing I got left, I've tried everything I have can read up on and think of, and why it might be crashing. And the only inkling I've gotten is. Well, the only thing people online say, but they don't prove it, they don't say, they don't try it and it fixes it, is, uh, you know, something to do with video drivers and stuff, but, but, and Windows machines. Well, I'm not running Windows, so, and the, cra and the thing to me is, well, it's worked perfectly since, if, you know, I've never had a problem with it crashing, I mean, it's crashed before, but not like every time you sort of start streaming, since I've been using it since 2016, so... I don't see it working perfectly one day and not working the next day. And coincidentally, right after I added um, all of these audio cam one, and I, in the previous videos, I tried it. I went and I ended up audio cam. They're all named the same thing in every scene. I copied and pasted them in there, and I thought that I kind of remember maybe that might have caused it to crash, and I had to quit doing that. Uh, because if you go and manually add... Uh, a VL, that's what that is, is a VLC stream. Well, you have to add a VLC. You say add like this, and you say vi uh, video, video, VLC video source, but then instead of doing video, you do audio, uh, which in this case would be the audio cam 2. Hit cancel. <coughs> um, and so what I did, let's see. Yeah, let me go to my, I'm going to go ahead and, Go to my scene collections. I went and tried everything under the sun. Let me just try number five. I, I believe you can. Okay, now we should still be okay. Since I'm on the SM58, we don't lose any audio, but there won't be. Uh, <clears throat> oh, well, one good thing about using the uh, lapel plugged in the computer. Oh, no, it's not there. I have to add it, but that's fine. Uh, I'll have to go in there and add that. See, it's not, it's not available in this. Uh, in this scene collection <clears throat> but what i do have in here is audio i renamed everything audio to cam actually i ended up deleting all the audio cam twos every one of them and then just manually putting them back in i didn't finish because it didn't stop it from crashing but i have audio cam two to desktop and audio cam one to desktop is in there ready to be uh 
used. Um, let's see, and see what you do is you put the uh, you have, you put the IP of the phone, uh, which is running IP webcam. That's how all this works. An app called IP webcam. But you put uh, forward slash. You put the the IP the port eighty eighty forward slash audio dot wave. That's how you get audio. To get video, you do. Uh, let's see. I need. You can see the small, it'll be small, but you can see it um, right there. It's actually named by the IP address, so it's uh, IP port 8080 forward slash video, no, no uh, file extension or anything. And that's how you get the video. But you add it by the same video out of VLC stream. And then I have audio cam 2 to uh, 1 and desktop. That's what this scene is. And then... Uh, Audio Cam 1, well, I didn't name it that way in this one, and Desktop. Okay, let's go to uh, number 6. I think I got it the way it, we would want it. It goes back to the, that uh, scene. Okay, let's go to Cam 1 and Desktop. Yeah, now it's, uh, oh, I took out Cam 2 because I decided I wasn't going to use it anymore. So I started working on doing Audio Cam 1 to Cam 1 and Desktop. And then this one is... Uh, Audio Cam 1 to Cam 2 and Desktop. And then this one is both uh, Cams 1 and 2, but I have, you can't see it, but I, I don't have any uh, audio from the cameras in there at all. And then uh, Cam 2, no audio from the cameras yet. Cam uh, 1, no audio from the cameras. <clears throat> and then Desktop. But this is the scene that I thought, once I got this far, I thought surely it won't crash, you know, because I don't have uh, any of the settings from... Um, Um, you know what, what I had done uh, those audio cam twos that were all duplicates because I had copied and pasted them into every uh, scene every one of my scenes but that didn't fix it so I still don't I, and I've gone round and round and round I've gone through the settings um, and so the only other thing I can see to do is uh, unless I see so there was one other thing kind of in the back of my mind, and now I've forgotten it, but what I've been thinking about to all day today is, and since last night, uninstall OBS and reinstall it, you know. Usually that doesn't help in Linux. Uh, usually when there's something wrong that you can't fix, it's usually a bug that will get fixed sooner or later by either the maker of the software or the maker of your operating system. You know, it, it, whoever has the bug. I think it's going to be a bug with OBS Studio because... Everybody, there's a lot of complaints about this happening, uh, you know, crashing when you hit start stream. Most of them, almost, almost all of them are with Windows users, though. But there's probably just a lot more Windows users, you know. So, um, I'm going to, uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, okay, that's where it should be. The lapels, yeah, they're just like they were, Okay. It is handy to have that open when you need it, but then you need to close it because you could accidentally screw that up. You could roll your mouse wheel, and it could move any of that if you happen to be focused on this and you don't remember it, don't know it. Um, <clears throat> actually, speaking of, I'm going to close that because I don't think I need it now, and I don't want to mess anything out because I think I've got it worked out. But I'm going to go in the set. I'm going to stay in this scene six because it's the one that's more the direction I want to go. And because uh, the next thing I will do is add that audio cam one to each scene and then plug the mic into cam one. And uh, I can, you know, use stream audio and video, but it'll just get out of sync more, I think. And it, I have to keep it plugged in to use video or else the battery will run down. And then that introduces uh, what it did on cam two, a little little low buzz. Uh, just in, It's not real bad, but enough that I don't want it. Because all you got to do to get rid of it is just not be plugged in. I uh, tried to, you know, uh, but this is a different camera, a different power adapter. And, well, I tried two power adapters on Cam 2, and it didn't make any difference. Uh, did make a difference to, I have a 10-foot cable and like a 3-foot cable, USB cable, to go from the charger to the uh, 
to the AC to DC adapter to the phone, and it did seem louder on the long cable than it was on the short cable. Uh, so I thought, well, maybe I should try it on phone one plugged in <coughs> and see if it's any maybe not there, you know. But I don't hold out much hope for it to, you know, being okay. So that's why I'm going to just start using phone one as <coughs> audio only. <coughs> Then I can, um, I think I'll start out leaving it on the tripod, but if I decide that's the way I want to do it, then I'll take it off the tripod and put it in the uh, bag like I did phone three. Just one thing, I think that maybe keeping that bag zipped up, or almost all the way zipped up all the time, whether I was wearing it or whether it was sitting up there, and when it's sitting up there on the TRS-80, it's sitting up here on the TRS-80, you can't see it, but it's right there. Um, this is the bag I'm talking about. It's kind of hung up. Oh, now my phone's behind. Um, real bad. Okay, that see that's happening anyway. Whether I'm uh, <clears throat> go to cam two. Okay, well you can kind of see the edge of it. I guess I could get. It. I'm scared of. It's hung pretty bad. The, the little strap that you put around your waist. Um, <clears throat> so I don't want to break. That's my CD case. It's about it's about four feet tall, and I don't want to break a cassette case, CD case, or pull that thing down. So I think I got it loose now. There we go. Oh. Yeah, leave it alone. Just leave it alone. You're getting, you're getting aggravated now. Uh, usually I'm standing up and I don't have a problem getting it on and off of there. But um, let's see if my... Oh, yeah, now I can see it. Oh, instant, delayed replay. It's not instant, that's for sure. So there's the bag. And, uh, of course, what I'm saying and what you're seeing is completely different things. Okay, so uh, that phone... Well, I've been, I've been uh, making lots of videos here for several hours now, I think, so... I guess the phones need <coughs> rebooting now. Although the one Tam 2 behind me was doing okay. It's a Cam 1. But, um, so, anyway, the last thing I want to do here, now I'm going to stay in this profile, and I'm going to go to audio. Now, see, there's no um, the uh, Ox, Mic Ox 2 is not set to anything, so I'm going to set it to uh, audio adapter mono that's what it calls itself hit apply and leave everything as it is let's see <clears throat> and I can even work on trying well it just doesn't work because the, the the latency the delay gets better and worse better and worse so if I I've went around and around a, a hundred times setting these uh, delays in the mics and everything get it all really close and then uh, maybe it'll last for an hour or two or maybe a whole day and then the next day it's all out of whack again so I'm, I'm unless I um, well now if I get like some wired cameras like some uh, IP cams that you know go through Ethernet then maybe it'll always stay the same and then I could set that uh, or whatever it is I do if I get a USB camera if I get a, a webcam you know a newer better webcam or something um, but I'm really leaning away from webcams, even though they would be easy and work well, because and it would probably not uh, it, the machine uh, could definitely only plug one of them in there. Um, then I couldn't if I plugged in main the scope. Yeah, that's right. Main the scope's a webcam, so and I really can't uh, use it more than a couple of three hours without having to reboot the machine. It really works the machine, so. Um, yeah, that would be a problem. So, oh, and they're both on. Okay. Uh, I keep forgetting that when you introduce that new uh, thing, it's it's on. So, um, sorry about all the echo. <clears throat> okay, so. Let's see. So there's the, uh, the lapel mic over here on this. Uh, and I shouldn't, yeah, the settings, the input settings, well, let's look, because for all I know, they're not the same. Go to the sound preferences. For all I know, that got changed, you know. I didn't think it would, but let's look and see. So we got our hardware. Okay. 
Now I've got the, uh, yeah, you still got a signal, even though I've got it muted, you still got a signal on the SM58. Okay, yeah, it looks, yeah. Looks to be about in the same place. Okay. All looks good now. <clears throat> okay, so, um, yeah, the one uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now because it will really make a huge difference. I didn't do it in that other scene, scene but um, let's see. I think you can go and, no, you can't do it from there. You can, uh, oh, audio filters. <clears throat> I've got a compressor. I don't know if it'll make, them, make the system work too hard, but there's a compressor. I don't think, oh, yeah, look at that, full, fully controllable compressor. That is awesome. <laughs> you got the ratio. But, you know, I'll tell you something I learned on, you know, analog kind of a combination there's some digital in those old 90s and you know gear but sound uh, compressors and noise gates and all that but anyway they call for the most part they're analog and uh two to one two to four is about the most you'd ever do well in these computer ones let's see look at there it's defaulted at 10 <clears throat> and the threshold that's that would be for the uh, now these compressors generally have a noise gate built in and they don't they don't say noise gate they just say threshold. <clears throat> well, no, no, this this is not a noise gate. I'm sorry. Threshold. It's going to start compressing at negative 18 dB. So that's going to be. Where is that going to be? I can't see the letters are too little. 15. Oh, okay, I think that says 30. <clears throat> Get my magnifying glass. Oh, that's 20. Okay, so we're, my, my, my mouse is on 20. So there you go. That's probably, I mean, the default's probably pretty good. And uh, attack, 6 milliseconds. I like to have a quick, ta quick attack and a quick release. That seems awfully slow of a release. I'm going to leave it for now. And you usually don't want any output gain in a digital system. Uh, so sedition ducking source. I have forgotten what ducking is. Let's see. Ducking source. I've forgotten what that is, but that's, uh, I remember seeing it and, you know, reading about it, seeing it in videos over the years. That's a, <clears throat> I, I've just flat forgotten. Uh, I can kind of guess, but uh, I'm going to leave it off. Okay, uh, check one, two. Oh, we need to get on the one we're setting. Check one, two. This is not where I was I was going to set a, a con you know, control five, I guess, to uh, turn it on and off so I could just use my keyboard, but I haven't done that yet. Check one, two. It looks fine. Check, check, check. And it's, it's not pegging like it was. I'm going to use that compressor. That might solve all my problems. All right, now, you can also have, there is a, a noise gate. A noise suppression, I don't think would be too good. I tried it out, uh, and but I do use gain on on the phones. The phones, they keep the signal too low, way too low. So I was using 17 dB gain. That's quite a bit of gain, but it worked great. Uh, okay, now let's see what the noise gate is. I'm probably going to leave them on close threshold at negative 30. Threshold at negative 32. I am going to look. Yeah, negative 32. Oh, that's down there. 50. Hey. Check one, two. I don't think that's a little too high. Negative two. That seems backwards. Check one, two. I'm going to leave it on defaults because. Sometimes my mind's rusty, and some, and I swear, some. I think they uh, they call things backwards in the digital descriptions of these things. Check, check. But you want uh, to have to have 
close. Okay, the gate's closed. That should give you no sound. That's what I'm thinking. Open, it gives you sound, right? So it should close. Maybe, I think they might be seeing it backwards from the way that my mind is working. Um, the gate, to me, the gate would be closed, which allows no sound. You know, shut off the sound. At, it should be at the lower threshold, and then open should be at the higher. Um, maybe I'm, I'm getting a little tired, so I'm going to leave it on the defaults and just see how it works. Doesn't, it's not... I'm not having to holler to get the signal out. It looks very natural in the V meter. Very cool. <clears throat> Check one, two. That may completely fix all my worries about using the... I've completely forgotten that that's in there. Now, I'll, and I'll have to see... Well, right now, the CPU... You can actually see how much CPUs are being used right here in OBS. It's 21.3%, no different than normal. And over here, it's about the same on the uh, system monitor. So... There you go. <clears throat> so, why do I keep forgetting that? I have said a hundred times that, well, I don't want into my head or even out loud in videos, I don't want to use the uh, mic, the lapel plug straight in the computer because I won't have my compressor and noise gate. Well, I have a. Oh, I did say, I did remember many times I remember. Remember recently, in the filters, I remember recently. <clears throat> Uh, saying, but I'm afraid the machine can't handle it. So we'll find out. It may not actually use that much resource. Okay. I'm just going to leave it on the defaults. Um, usually, this uh, good software like this, the defaults are usually pretty good. Um, a good starting point, anyway. <clears throat> so, uh, it looks like it's pretty much... Yeah, check one, two. That's the SM58. See, it goes up to about negative 5 or 10. I cannot see. That's the only thing. I can't read the letters. It's negative 5. <clears throat> it's too small for me. But um, it will go past. But, the, I mean, either one of them would. So, um... And the nice thing about this is uh, I had to be really careful because if you manually clicked, you know, uh, mute or unmute on any scene for those uh, mic, you know, the mic coming from the phones, then uh, it, would, it would get them out of sync. And so when you use your keyboard key shortcuts, um, then, you know, one would go on and one would go off instead of them all going on or on going off. You had to pay real close attention to that. I, I had got them out of sync a few times and really made everything go crazy because then you've got both mics going when you don't know it on one of the scenes and don't happen to look down and see it. <clears throat> so um, now I have to go back into settings to uh, do the hotkeys. Now, I've got, let me see. Okay, now there's mic aux. Okay, control four. So here's what I do. Control five is what I'm going to use because I've got one, two, three uh, phones. I'm just going to leave the, in my head. Three still there, even though it's I'm not using it right now. Control five, and then so that should toggle on, toggle off. Now um, I think I have to close the window to get to, to try it out. Here we go. go. Okay, now there we go. That now when you it's a single input instead of multi inputs. That's all there is to it. Uh, but I had to do that for every scene over here before when I was using the, the audio through the mic. Now, but the coolest thing about using that one camera is just audio. That was a wireless mic that would last five to eight hours. That's how long I could talk on that thing without running the battery down. <clears throat> And so, you know, I can get up and run around. I'm not tethered to a cable. I would just roll up the extra cable from my lapel and put it in that bag that I was trying to show you a while ago. So, uh, now, now we've got them both. Now we got the SM58. Very cool. Now I'm going to leave that like that. And uh, so now I'll have lapel and SM58 um, to do my videos. Except for I will be tethered to the, you know, within... 
Well, this cable's supposed to be 16 foot long, I think. So, you know, I can, but here in my room, I can get around most of my room with it. I know that. So, uh, I'm liking that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, I don't know what it's, I think it's going to sound a heck of a lot better with a compressor and a noise gate. I guess I need to go listen to it and see. Okay. So I'm going to go and, uh, I need a break now anyway. So I'm going to go and, uh, I'll listen back to my video. <laughs> 